punish a tyrant or to uphold freedom. The need of a defensive war arises when the aggression of an adversary threatens one's own life. These are the three kinds of jihad permitted by the shariat. And apart from these three kinds, there is no other kind of war which is permitted by Islam for the propagation of the faith. I have, in short, spent a large sum of money on such books and have published them in this country and in Arabia and Syria and Khurasan, etc. But by the grace of God, I have now discovered powerful arguments which are meant to eradicate these unfounded beliefs from the hearts of the people. I have clear proofs, circumstantial evidence of a conclusive character, and historical evidence, the light of which truth holds out the promise that soon after their publication there will be brought about against such beliefs a wonderful change in the hearts of the Muslims. And I hope, I am sure, that after these truths have been comprehended, there will flow out of the hearts of the righteous sons of Islam the sweet and beautiful springs of lowliness, humility, and mercy, and that there will come about a spiritual change which will have a wholesome and a blessed influence on the country. I am also sure that Christian investigators and all other people who hanker after the truth and thirst for it will benefit from my books. And the fact just now stated by me that the real object of this book is to correct the wrong beliefs which have become part and parcel of the creeds of Muslims and Christians requires a little explanation which I set out below. Let it be known that most Muslims and Christians believe that Jesus, on whom be peace, went alive to the heavens. Both these people have believed for a long time that Jesus, on whom be peace, is still alive in the heavens and will some day, in the latter days, come down to the earth. The difference in their views, that is, the view of the followers of Islam and that of the Christians, is only this, that the Christians believe that Jesus, on whom be peace, died on the cross, was resurrected, and went to the heavens in his earthly body, seated himself on the right hand of his Father, and will come to the earth in the latter days for judgment. They also say that the Creator and the Master of the world is this Jesus, the Messiah, and no one else. He it is who, in the latter days of the world, will descend to the earth with a glorious descent to award punishment and reward then all who will not believe in him or his mother as God, will be hauled up and thrown into hell, where weeping and wailing will be their lot. But the aforesaid sects of Muslims say that Jesus, on whom be peace, was not crucified, nor did he die on the cross. On the other hand, when the Jews arrested him in order to crucify him, an angel of God took him away to the heavens in his earthly body. And he is still alive in the heavens, which, they say, is the second heaven, where is also the prophet Yahya, that is, John. Muslims, moreover, also say that Jesus, on whom be peace, is an eminent prophet of God, but not God, nor the Son of God. And they believe that he will in the latter days descend to the earth near the minaret of Damascus, or near some other place supported on the shoulders of two angels, and that he and Imam Muhammad the Mahdi who will be already in the world and who will be a Fatimite will kill all the non-Muslims, not leaving anyone alive except those who will forthwith and without any delay become Muslims. In short, the real object of the descent of Jesus, on whom be peace, to the earth, as stated by Muslim sects known as Arh-i Sunat or Arh-i Hadith, called Wahhabis by the common people, is that, like the Mahadev of the Hindus, he should destroy the whole world, that he should first threaten the people to become Muslims, and then, if they persist in disbelief, massacre them all with the sword. They, moreover, say that he is alive in the heavens in his earthly body, so that when Muslim powers become weak, he will come down and kill the non-Muslims, or coerce them on pain of death to become Muslims. Regarding the Christians especially, the divines of the aforesaid sects state that when Jesus, on whom be peace, comes down from the heavens, he will break all the crosses in the world, do many a cruel deed with the sword, and inundate the world with blood. And, just as I have stated, these people, that is, the Ahi Hadith, etc., from among the Muslims, are enthusiastic about their belief that a short time before the coming down of the Messiah, 
there will appear an imam from the Bani Fatima, whose name will be Muhammad the Mahdi. He it is who will be Khalifa and king of the time, and as he will belong to the Quraysh, his real object will be to kill all non-Muslims except those who readily recite the Kalima. Jesus, on whom be peace, will come down in order to help him in his work. And although Jesus himself, on whom be peace, will be a Mahdi, nay, a greater Mahdi, yet because it is essential that the Khalifa of the time should be a Quraysh, Jesus, on whom be peace, will not be the Khalifa of the time. The Khalifa of the time will be that same Muhammad, the Mahdi. Muslims say that these two together will fill the earth with the blood of man, and they will shed more blood than has ever been shed before in the history of the world. No sooner will they appear than they will start this bloody campaign. They will neither preach nor plead nor show any sign. And they also say that although Jesus, on whom be peace, will be like an advisor or a lieutenant of Imam Muhammad, the Mahdi, and although the reins of power will be in the hands of the Mahdi only, Jesus, on whom be peace, will instigate Hasrat Imam Muhammad the Mahdi to massacre the whole world and will advise him to adopt extreme measures, that is, he will make amends for the humane teaching which he had given to the world before, namely, not to resist evil, and, being struck on one cheek, to turn the other cheek also. This is what Muslims and Christians believe regarding Jesus, on whom be peace. And while it is a great error to call him, as the Christians do, a humble man, God, the beliefs of some of the followers of Islam, among whom is the sect called Ahi Hadith, also known as Wahhabis, regarding a bloody Mahdi and a bloody Messiah, are affecting their morals very badly, so much so that on account of their bad influence their dealings with other people are not based on honesty and goodwill, nor can they be truly and completely loyal to a non-Muslim government. All reasonable men will realize that such a belief, namely that non-Muslims should be subjected to coercion, that they should either forthwith become Muslims or be put to death, is open to the most serious objections. Every conscientious person will readily admit that before a man adequately realizes the truth of a faith, and before he has comprehended its beauties and its wholesome teachings, it is extremely undesirable to coerce him on pain of death, to adopt that faith. Far from contributing to the growth of that faith, this would furnish the opponents with an opportunity to find fault with it. The ultimate result of a principle like this is that hearts become devoid of the quality of human sympathy and that mercy and justice, which are great human moral qualities, take leave of men and instead spitefulness and enmity tend to grow. There remain behind only the animal passions, wiping out all high moral qualities. But it would be noticed that such a teaching could not have proceeded from God, who sends his punishment only after he has completed his argument. Let this therefore be pondered over, that if there is a man who does not accept the true faith because he is yet ignorant and unaware of its truth, of its teachings and its beauties, would it be reasonable to kill such a man forthwith? Nay, this man deserves pity. He deserves to be instructed gently and politely in the truth, beauty, and the spiritual benefit of that faith. Not that his denial should be met by the sword or the gun. So the doctrine of jihad proposed by the sects of Islam, as well as the belief that the time is near when there will arise a bloody Mahdi whose name would be Imam Muhammad, that the Messiah will come down from the heavens for his help and that both together will kill all non-Muslim people if they deny Islam, is utterly opposed to our moral sense. Is not this the belief which puts out of action all good qualities and morals and encourages the qualities of life in the jungle? Those who hold such beliefs live a life of hypocrisy in relation to others, so much so that they cannot give true loyalty to the state authorities of another faith, they dishonestly profess to give allegiance to them, which is wrong. That is why some of the al hadith sects mentioned by me just now are living a double life under the British government.